Hi friends, it's Deanna Willison with our Blooming Catholic Life and you can see the uh, prayer sweater. You know, it's time to slow down and dive into the word um, and do some Lexio Divina. So let's get started. It's Monday, so we've got a new section. We've been reading Second Chronicles, also called Second Paralopomenion, also called Second The Things Left Out. It's the spiritual history of of Israel during a certain period of time. Have you got your prayer journals? You hopefully have been writing reflections in it all along, which is lovely because we've been working our way through this chapter. Um, and I have, remember that's from the front to the back, from the back to the front, I have a series of prayers, including the Signum Crucis, the Oratio Ante Crucifixum Dicta, and the <laughs> blessing of Brother Leo. I don't know why I didn't bother putting that in Latin. It's kind of funny. Let's get started. In nomine Patris, et Filii, et Spiritus Sancti. Amen. Sume glorioso Deus, illumina tenebras cordis mehi, et da mihi fidem rectum, spem certain et caritatem perfectum, domine ut facium tum sanctum et verax mandata. Amen. Let's see here. We are again in second whatever you're going to call it. If you have uh, the Douay Rheims, version of the Holy Bible that's done by St. Benedict Press. I am on page 477. We are in chapter 29, verses 25 through 29. Getting close to the end. We're more than halfway through this. It's been an exciting time. Um, we looked at some really bad kings and now there's a good one risen up. And what did he do? How did he restore the temple? I think it's so timely. It is perfect for so many times in history, it's perfect for now. Um, and so I'm excited to see his next step. What did this good king do? And he set the Levites in the house of the Lord with cymbals and psalteries and harps, according to the regulation of David the king, and of Gad the seer, and of Nathan the prophet, for it was the commandment of the Lord by the hand of his prophets. And the Levites stood with the instruments of David and the priests with trumpets. And Ezekiel commanded that they should offer holocausts upon the altar. And when the holocausts were offered, they began to sing praises to the Lord and to the sound with trumpets and diverse instruments, which David, the king of Israel, had prepared. And all the multitude adored and the singers and the trumpeters were in their office till the holocaust was finished. And when the oblation was ended, the king and all that were with him bowed down and adored. Oh, friends, this reminds me so much of when we do benediction. I've never been to a benediction that had trumpets and cymbals, but apparently King David had set up a procedure for this. It'd be really interesting if anyone knows where we can find this, if this still exists, this document. It'd be really exciting. So they weren't ad-libbing. They weren't blessing people with guitars. They weren't like, hey, I've got this cool new instrument. You know I love the dulcimer, but am I playing it at mass? <laughs> no. It'd be like a last minute if there was absolutely no music. I don't know. Is it okay? I don't know. But it'd be fun to play worship music as I do on my own or for my own prayer time. That I do. But I love this. So they were following the dictates of King David and of Gad the seer, and of Nathan the prophet. This was already commanded down by God through these prophets, and that's what they did. Um, and then when the when the sacrifice was done, they all bowed down and adored. When was the last time you saw people bow down and adore? Only truly when I've gone to a benediction or adoration, um, when I go in with the first Saturday's devotion, I've seen people really really just in awe of the Lord. And it's so moving and so beautiful. If that happened at every mass, if people showed that truly that emotion, we, we'd change the world. There were like, probably wouldn't be anybody that wouldn't be converted because we'd be showing what we believe wholeheartedly. Uh, there are people who I think kneel just because it's, it's in the books or they don't kneel. Cause they're like, I have I have the bad knees or I have the bad back. And sure, that's valid sometimes. Would you say that to God if he was right there in front of you, though? Like, sometimes it's worth the extra effort. Now, I don't normally totally kneel because I pass out. And that causes such a scene if I pass out. Like, it's not good. Um, So, <laughs> I have my way. I do still kneel 
And so I think that you could probably find some adaptation um, to showing that reverence, even if you can't go down and completely bow down and kneel. Um, it's just interesting when the oblation was ended. Sorry, let me get back to it. I'll read it a few more times. I don't know what's jumping out at you. That's what jumped out at me. That, that's why we have the prayer journals, right? And he set the Levites in the house of the Lord. So not just anyone. He didn't go out and pick women because, you know, women are nice and they have. Sorry. And he set the Levites in the house of the Lord with cymbals and psalteries and harps, according to the regulation of David the king and of Gad the seer and of Nathan the prophet. For it was the commandment of the Lord by the hand of his prophets. And the Levites stood with the instruments of David and the priests with trumpets. And Ezekiel commanded that they should offer holocaust on, upon the altar. And when the holocausts were offered, they began to sing praises to the Lord and to sound with trumpets and diverse instruments which David the king of Israel had prepared. And all the multitude adored and the singers and the trumpeters were in their office till the holocaust was finished. And when the oblation was ended, the king and all that were with him bowed down and adored. It's just so powerful, isn't it, friends? You know. You know when it's real. You know. And he set the Levites in the house of the Lord with cymbals and psalteries and harps, according to the regulation of David the king, and of Gad the seer, and of Nathan the prophet. For it was the commandment of the Lord by the hand of his prophets. And the Levites stood with the instruments of David and the priests with trumpets. And Ezekiel commanded that they should offer holocausts upon the altar. And when the holocausts were offered, they began to sing praises to the Lord and to sound with trumpets and diverse instruments, which David, the king of Israel, had prepared. And all the multitude adored and the singers and the trumpeteers were in their office till the holocaust was finished. And when the oblation was ended, the king and all that were with him bowed down and adored. And he set the Levites in the house of the Lord with cymbals and psalteries and harps, according to the regulation of David the king and of Gad the seer and of Nathan the prophet. For it was the commandment of the Lord by the hand of his prophets. Friends, how is this passage moving you? How is it going to change your worship practice this week? It's such a great opportunity. A call. Call to what? How is this word speaking to you? Write it down in your journal. And the Levites stood with the instruments of David and the priests with trumpets. And Ezekiel commanded that they should offer holocausts upon the altar. And when the holocausts were offered, they began to sing praises to the Lord and to sound with trumpets and diverse instruments, which David, the king of Israel, had prepared. And all the multitude adored and the singers and the trumpeteers were in their office till the holocaust was finished. And when the oblation was ended, the king and all that were with him bowed down and adored. Mm. Friends, it's just so inspiring, isn't it? it? Makes makes me want to run to the Adoration Chapel right now. I will be there later tonight, though. I'm not going now. I have a few more things to do, um, but I, I'm going to actually be there tonight. So I'm excited to take this passage with me. Let's go ahead and give our closing prayer, the, the blessing of Brother Leo. Benedicat tibi dominus et custodiat te, Ostendat Dominus Facium Sum Tibi et Miserator Tui, Convertat Dominus Voltum Sum Ad Te et Dominus Bonus Det Tibi Pacem. In nomine Patris et Filii et Spiritus Sancti. Amen.